Yeah, I will talk about value-flavored structures, and uh, let's have a look of what this is. <coughs> I will talk about uh, what structures are in general, and especially then value-flavored structures. I show you the syntax, how to define the value-flavored structures, and how you would use them. Just examples so that you get an idea of what's going on. And I'm not the first one to talk about these things. Nick Nelson talked about value-flavored structures earlier at some of the previous Euroforce conferences. And um, we have a different uh, notion of how to define value-flavored structures. So we will have a look at Nick's syntax and how my approach could be adapted to use that syntax as well. So, and Probably that's also something that the community needs to discuss um, what is a, an appropriate way to um, define these kinds of things. Um, and then the, the idea was to provide something like a library or a package that would allow any standard for system just to use my contribution and then have value flavored structures and I will talk a little bit about the uh, experiences that I have. The same with, um, of course, we will see that value flavored structures will um, have different kinds of sizes and different ways to access uh, memory. And so they are based on memory access operators. And um, yeah, it uh, turns out we don't have an agreement on how they look like. So uh, my implementation has lots of conditional compilation. Uh, VFX uses this one, GeForce uses that one, uh, uh, SwiftForce uses these kinds of operators to come to some common ground. And then once uh, we're there, then uh, I can build up the value flavored structures on top of it. That's cumbersome right now, and it would be much better if we come to some uh, agreement on what memory access operators would be. And luckily, uh, with the preceding four standards uh, meeting, uh, we are on a good way to do so. And then I come to a conclusion. So let's see what are structures. Um, it's a, if you have a collection of data that are related and you want to manipulate them in, uh, uh, in, uh, together, um, then uh, it's really uh, reasonable to uh, put them in a record or in a structure and you represent these structures, say, uh, two, three numbers, for example, or and a string. Um, you represent uh, this data in contiguous memory, and uh, part of uh, that memory is uh, the first number, part is the second number, and uh, then some memory, parts of that memory is the string that you represent. Yeah. And uh, so you have different parts in this contiguous memory uh, that are the elements of uh, the structure and um, we call these different elements fields yeah? and normally if you don't do anything uh, you calculate all the addresses by yourself and we see old force code all over the place that does something like 2 plus fetch or uh, 15 plus c fetch and uh, you never know what this actually is yeah so the idea is actually to give names to these f uh, fields and let the compiler do the appropriate calculation of the offsets. Yeah? So then I can say X for the first number, Y for the second number, which actually does the address calculation and uh, get to the offset in the, in the memory. Uh, yeah, right. And um, what we currently have uh, in the standard is that um, <clears throat> uh, you have field names and they do the appropriate address calculation and they return the address offset within the, uh, 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 of the field within the um, memory area that is interesting. Yeah? And then you have the address and if you want to access the data in there, you have to choose the correct ad address, memory address operator, say you know, ah, this is a string, you do count on that string, for example, or if it's an integer or, or cell, then you do fetch, or maybe it's a float, you have to do f fetch. And you have to remember which field has which type, so you can use the correct memory operators on that. So as an example here, 
uh, you could uh, say zero, and then there's the standard word field um, that um, uh, defines a field name and uh, does the appropriate offset. It takes the size of the field, so it knows how to adjust the offset ongoing. You know how this works. Um, in the end, if you do all the definition, uh, you have the size of the memory area that the structure will occupy on the stack, and you can define a constant, for example, um, uh, and so point in this case will be whatever memory is used for a point, and it's uh, common practice to call this uh, like the data type. And then later on you can create a point, you say create P1 point a lot, then this uh, allocates uh, appropriate amount of uh, uh, data, uh, space in the memory in the dictionary, and then uh, if you want to access this, then you can use the field name. So you say P1, which is the base address, X does the appropriate calculation, well, zero <laughs> plus in this case, but it could be P1, Y, fetch dot, so you have to know it's a cell, and then you can print this out. If you want to have a more elaborated syntax, uh, the standard also define syntactic sugar for this, so there's begin structure where now the record name goes to the top, uh, and then end structure that um, sets up everything fine, but it's essentially the same. Right, all this is standardized, yay. So we can do this uh, on any standard system that supports these kinds of things, so that's great. Um, if we talk to lots of people, they say, well, variable and f writing fetch all the time, that is so cumbersome. Isn't it uh, 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 easier to just name the word and get the value directly? And this was the invention of values. Yeah, and uh, so values are getting, um, um, uh, getting used uh, a lot. So like, like this, you could say five value limit and then uh, you can print out limit, uh, the value of limit directly without a fetch by just limit dot. And uh, so naming the word just uh, puts the value on the stack and now you have to have some way to store something in it. And uh, the usual thing to do that is the tone notation or VFX uses also an arrow to stick the value inside the value uh, fourth value word. And the idea is, well, can't we naturally extend this? Uh, uh, what we really want to have is give types to the uh, fields and uh, then let the compiler do more things than just uh, calculate the offset uh, of the field, but also know how to fetch the data and know how to store the data and so on. So. Uh, what, I, what do I mean by the type of a field? Well, for me, a type is a set of values and appropriate reasonable operations on that. Yeah? So it's not just a bit pattern, but also things that you typically do on, on these kinds of things. Um, in force, we are used to do whatever we want with a bit pattern that we uh, get hands on, and uh, using values is a departure from that. Uh, so. Uh, there we really say, well, um, we know it's a cell, for example, and the implied meaning of a value word is fetch the cell value from the memory location that is associated to the value word. Um, so we, we limit what is possible. But the advantage is we don't need to remember uh, how the data is stored there. It will just fetch it uh, appropriately. Yeah, so the, uh, the idea is um, um, well, the compiler, yeah, well, I need in principle to keep track of all the operators uh, uh, when I'm accessing data, and now uh, that is <coughs> okay if you start uh, write an initial program, but as soon as you start changing a program uh, because you do a software revision or because you move port it to some other hardware, um, then it becomes cumbersome to see what actually changes. The 32-bit, 64-bit um, uh, transition is a classical example of this. And also, if you have some kind of memory map devices, 
uh, then you typically also have structures to access these, and some are just bytes, and some are 16-bit uh, uh, words, and it would be much nicer if you don't need to take care of all this in your mind and let the compiler find the right operators to uh, deal on uh, with this. Yeah? Like the standard values, uh, if you want to set it, you use the tone notation, and the same is what we want to do with fields. Yeah, and uh, this means uh, I would like to have something like this, uh, just a made-up syntax, uh, maybe one says y field x and one says y field y, it, it, yeah, and then um, I just want to say p1 x and it fetches the value by itself and then I also want to see 55 uh, p1 to x to actually store something in there. Yeah, and the compiler should know about the size and the operators that this field uh, requires, and that's what we want. So, uh, this is a made-up syntax. My concrete syntax looks like this. I have uh, names uh, for types and appropriate uh, definers for, f for value fields, uh, and they are, well, yeah, just um, proposals for names that you could use. So, int age, colon, uh, is a defining word that takes, uh, uh, that creates a value field at the current position. Um, this is actually an a 8-bit uh, value. So if you later name the field, it will fetch, uh, well, it will see fetch an appropriate word. S int H will do a sign extension when fetching, and so on. So uh, as an example, yeah, we, we can see here uh, that's a descriptor that tries out, as part of my test suite, uh, tries out to define any kind of fields that I predefined, but of course you are able to do user-defined types. Um, so you say, again, we start with zero, like in the struct, or we could do begin, structure, whatever, and that should be the same. And then I say int 8 colon u8. So now I have a value field u8, and whenever I uh, use this on a base address, it will calculate the appropriate offset and fetch the value. So, right, um, that's uh, how you do it. So, uh, in principle, it works as the structures before. You say create d, d desk is the size of the structure. Um, you allocate that in uh, the dictionary, and then you can say something like minus 1, uh, D is the descriptor to S8. And then it takes the minus 1 and stores it to S8. Well, minus 1, I have a 32-bit system, has 32 bits set, uh, and only the lower 8 bits will be stored uh, in that field S8, yeah? because it's a sign extended character field, 8-bit sign extended. If later on I go, say I want to know the value again, I say D S8, it fetches the eight bits and it does the sign extension and I get minus one again. Sure. Yeah. Um, the upcoming memory words that will also use S for sign extended things. Uh, that, that might be the reason, and ah, actually I was inspired by uh, the C world where, where they, if you look at, uh, if they want to have types of specific sizes, they, I think they use these kinds of, uh, of names. No, they use U int, they use U int. Anyway, uh, it's about to be discussed, uh, it's just um, uh, what I thought was reasonable at that time. Yeah, I don't know. So. Um, and, of course, you want to have user-defined types. Uh, the value-flavored fields fetch their value as the implicit read uh, operation, and you use um, appropriate um, uh, operators similar to values to manipulate the value of a value field, like to, what we've already seen, plus to size of address. That's what I did, because, of course, at some time you want to have the address uh, and not the value of a field, because you want to do some more elaborated things, maybe break the type system and uh, not uh, uh, use the intended interpretation or the specified interpretation, but do, to do something else. I think that's always important to uh, be able to 
get the address and then uh, uh, deal with it in the way where you say um, uh, this is reasonable for the application at hand. So it, it's all intended to be a, a help, a, a, a support the programmer and not uh, put some cuffs on, on it. Right, so, um, well, there's this complete zoo of uh, defining uh, words for fields, and uh, they all boil down to a uh, construction kit, the primitive field definer slot. Slot is from the Lisp world where they call the fields of a structure slot. Uh, it's uh, from knowledge engineering. And because I didn't want to use call it field or value field of field with a V, uh, I just say, well, maybe I call, just call it slot. Again, this could be debated or, or whatever this is. And slot is a monster. It takes a lot of uh, parameters from the stack. Certainly the offset, so that uh, the appropriate offset calculation can be done like with field colon. Um, but then you also, uh, and of course the size of uh, the field, so that uh, the offset for the next field uh, can be calculated at compile time. But then you want to access now the, this field uh, as, a, um, as a typed entity. Uh, so you have to specify what is the read operator, what is the write operator. Um, uh, there might be alignment issues uh, where you say the field is not allowed to start at an uh, odd a memory address, but it has to be aligned or floating point aligned or, or whatever. Um, and you want also to increment this. So this um, maps to executing the field uh, name without any further. Yeah? We'll call xt get. Um, using it with to, we'll call xt set. Using it so with plus to, we'll call it with uh, xt incur. And um, if you use address, it can go and uh, use offset and size, uh, uh, offset. Uh, to, to get the appropriate address, and uh, if you want to know the size, you can go and ask it for the appropriate size, and it, it extracts these fields. So it's a very simple definition. It mainly captures all these things, and um, then uh, Tor and plus Tor uh, will actually go ahead and fetch the appropriate things. So, and then with using slot, you define um, the appropriate field definers like int 8 looks like this, or if you want to, u int 8 looks like this. Um, it's a field of size 1. There are no alignment restrictions. You do uh, get the value by using cfetch. You store a value by doing cstore, and you store some, or you increment the value by using c plus store, whatever this is, uh, but uh, my system defines it as a byte increment operator. Yeah, and then it calls slot. So this is an interesting uh, application of, uh, of a partial application. So if you see um, int 8 still takes the offset that slot defines, but it specifies all the other components. Yeah? So being a field definer, the offset is on top, and uh, 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 a new offset needs to be uh, calculated, but that is uh, just uh, done by slot. So the offset comes from the outside. Int 8 will supply additional values uh, for the parameterization of the slot and then call slot, and this goes and actually calculates the offset. And I find this quite interesting because uh, um, uh, it's like partial ap function application in functional languages, um, and you, you just use colon definition to do that. Yeah, you, you apply some something. And, and uh, I thought, yeah, should I have a field definer word uh, where it just takes the four parameters and then that, we don't need that. We can just use colon definition. So, and, um, so um, if you have floating point, yeah, then it's, in my case, uh, eight byte long floating point. Uh, you align floating point fields by using F aligned. You fetch them by F fetch store, F store, and F plus store to increment, and that's it. So this is how you would, would do it. And then, of course, you can use the defined words because mine are just partial applications uh, 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 of uh, slot or applications of slot colon uh, to define a, an appropriate type. Right. So next syntax. 
um, this is uh, how uh, Nick Nelson actually defines value flavored structures. So he has also uh, names for the types, but they are different. So it's V in, V word, V byte, V cell. Uh, and he also has array uh, capability where you give uh, uh, a number of elements and then it creates an array inside. Um, and yeah, so this is uh, how it's done. And um, it's quite easy. Um, the, the, the simple things just map to my names and that's it. And size of, uh, in his case, I think has uh, uh, the field size on top um, and I, I store the size inside the definer, uh, inside the field name, and uh, so my size of has a different stack effect than his, but um, it, it, that's easy to, um, to uh, adapt. And then V field is something that uh, we want to do, uh, and um, it, it's actually a, a, yeah, a string defining word. And um, so no alignment restriction, the size is on, on the stack and um, you uh, access it by count and you store it by place and uh, we can't increment strings. So anyway, so that's, that's this. And um, so that's the value flavored structures, essentially boiling down to slot colon, the monster as a construction kit. And uh, so it's easy to use um, uh, it to, for defining different syntaxes. And there is where the community needs to start discussion uh, on uh, what syntax do we actually appreciate and what do we want to have. Right, so um, the next step was, well, I would like to make a package out of this and uh, contribute this to the community, uh, make it accessible on the force.net uh, packaging side. And uh, the force.net actually um, manages all the um, uh, storing and publishing and uh, downloading of the packages. But the uh, problem that um, uh, we face is uh, how do you structure the package itself in, in a, as a software? Um, yeah, and if you have a library or a package, then you have uh, internal names that I just use to provide the functionality. Of course, we want to do good factoring. So I have lots of internal names uh, that uh, provide the functionality. And then we have some functionality that is exposed to the user of the library. Yeah, it's like modules are working all the time. Some interface, uh, that's what is exposed and some hidden uh, definitions um, that are just used for implementing what is provided. Yeah, and how do we organize this with, uh, with FORCE? I think that is a, something that we urgently need. And I hear people talking about over and over again, we need libraries, we need libraries, we need libraries. And I think it's a um, uh, showstopper that we don't have any facility to do so. As a community, Yeah, 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 there, there, there is VFX that has modules and there's a clone of modules on the force.net. But then you, you have a dependency on that module. You can't, you, you have to use the modules package first and then you can use the value flavored structures. Uh, uh, what I would like to see is that we have some standard notion okay. that we know a standard system, you, you can do it like this. And I can show you just in a moment how I do it. So VFX has module, SwiftForce has package, and they are incompatible. Um, and we don't have a standard way to do that. So if I really just want my library to be loaded on top of a standard system, I use something that I call phrases. Yeah? If I want to do package, I write this long sentence. Word list, constant, well, in my case, value uh, structs word list. And then I manipulate the uh, search order. It's, it's essentially a uh, inline version of what the package word uh, is defined in SwiftForce, more or less the essential idea. Uh, it's 
the SwiftForce implementation is a little bit more complicated, but anyway, uh, you manipulate the search order. Having no plus order in the standard, you have to get order, uh, word list, uh, swap one plus, set order to push it uh, in the search order, and you set it to current and leave some parts on the stack so that uh, if you want to expose external things that are defined in the vocabulary or in the word list outside, you can say um, dup set current as a phrase, and if you want to stick back to internal definitions, you can say where you start word list set current, so switch the defining word list by this, and at the end of the library you say, um, well, we set the current word list to what it used to be before, and then we clean up the search order so, so that only the exposed definitions are visible. That works fine, but I hate it. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, I would raise the, um, the question, do we want to have something that is um, uh, possible? Uh, maybe the, the name library is still, op uh, still free, so we can use something uh, on that. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing is uh, the memory access operators. Yeah, you s you've seen if, if you define a, a value field definer, you have to specify the reader, the writer, and the incrementer, and um, uh, you have to use names. C++ is something that is not standardized easy enough to, to implement, of course, uh, and, and to provide by the library. Um, but uh, for most of the memory operator, it would be great if they would just be standardized and you know what you use and need to use to define something. But de facto, it's not even de facto standardized, uh, not formally, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and you see both sides, different words for the same purpose and same word for different purpose. So we have WFetchS, for example, on SwiftForce, yeah, stressing word fetch and then sign extension. And we have SWFetch on GeForce, for example. And um, uh, we have SWFetch on VFX, which actually uh, looks at the floating point status word, uh, which is something completely different, which is all fine. Uh, uh, every system is free to choose uh, the names as they wish um, uh, if they are not standardized. Uh, so, uh, but this leads in the library of value flavored structure to quite amount of conditional compilation. Is this a system that provides SW fetch? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, then it might be uh, better to use uh, W fetch S instead, so a synonym is defined and so on. And most likely you want to have this only internally because you don't want to expose all these uh, dependencies uh, to the user of the, of, of the system. Anyway, I think it would be necessary to agree on a common set of memory operators, and as I said, we are on the way to do so. Yeah, that, that for sure. So Stephen's comment was uh, that instead of conditional compilation, you should uh, use harnesses, which is uh, system-specific preload files uh, that you uh, include to bring all systems on a common level and then program uh, with respect to that common level. Yeah, this is currently in line uh, and yeah, uh, that's certainly something uh, that is uh, interesting to do. I didn't do that because I wanted to value flavored structures to be a single file and uh, not put the harnesses outside, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's a good recommendation. I will consider to uh, change it that way. So. Yeah, first detecting the, uh, the system and then do the appropriate definition based on the system that you identified. For uh, the conclusion, so uh, I presented value flavored structures similar to what uh, Nick already did with a different syntax. And uh, since values are used more and more, uh, it's the logical conclusion to also use these inside structures and fields. Um, I talked about the syntax. Um, uh, yeah, it, it should be similar to structure definitions. That's all my concern. So, uh, and, but then the concrete syntax is completely out of uh, my, uh, uh, my preferences uh, and uh, the community need to talk and discuss this. 
um, uh, their slot colon as the construction kit and uh, the appropriate syntax needs to be found out. Yeah, I dislike Nick syntax. That's probably why I came up with something else. Uh, it looks so windowish um, uh, for me. But uh, yeah, uh, that's probably the case. I would like to package software, and the force.net is a platform to, to, to uh, distribute it. That's great, uh, but I'd like to have a standard way to uh, structure a package uh, library module, whatever you call it. And um, as for the memory op operators, um, it would be great if we have some common ground uh, that you can just use it uh, without figuring out what systems you have and what memory operators are there in that version um, to come to a common ground. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, maybe we have some additional questions. We had some intermediate questions already. So uh, Anton reports that the development version of GeForce uh, does more or less the same already. And um, yeah, my question to you would be, are there any uh, things missing, uh, like I uh, put in alignment very late? Um, uh, are there any properties of a slot value field that need to be captured uh, that I didn't mention? M maybe, so the, the question is, uh, do, do we restrict ourselves if we go and standardize slot with only a, a, a getter setter? And, yeah, I think it's it's just a uh, contribution to a discussion. Yeah, what 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 we need to do, and it looks like well, at least these are the things that you want to do, and um, if you want to go further, then we have to rethink all the object-oriented stuff, and uh, see then fields will be objects, and then uh, you could have different fields react on different messages. But um, yeah, that's uh, also this is at the low level uh, what you can achieve easily, and then the other thing is a year-long ongoing discussion already.